I want a Corvette C5, but I want to pay more, go slower, and not have an LS. This is a caddy, and it's a nice car. One on one, the king of North Star. This ain't a Corvette, but it's a nice car, and it's an XLR. Two thousand five Cadillac XLR. This is a Corvette. It's a Corvette. It, it's a Corvette for an apartment building owner who just sold all of his property, real estate, and wants to throw his money at something as expensive and ridiculous as his Oakley sunglasses. Cadillac XLR. The car you win if you get the final puzzle right in Wheel of Fortune. Really, you just wanted money, but nope. Now you have to pay taxes on the car before they'll let you take ownership and sell it, and you probably won't get the original asking price once you do. So enjoy your debt. And sorry, but John Oliver isn't around to forgive it this time. A boomer dreams of owning a Cadillac in the same way he dreams about owning a boat. Because out there, beyond the breakers, her lawyers can't find him. So he has a Cadillac XLR, and it has a CD player. <sighs> and you know he drives this caddy with a mix CD his nephew made for him by request. Here's what happened. Uncle Caddy Security Deposit gave his nephew a list of songs written on the back of a used envelope. And the nephew cringed at the track list of predictable boomer drivel that he just agreed to assemble. Here we go. Track one, Life is a Highway by Tom Cochran. Track two, Thunder Road by Bruce Springsteen and the East Street Band. Track three, Hollywood Nights by Bob Seger. Track or Born to be Wild by Steppenwolf. Track 5, Can't You See by Marshall Tucker Band. A uh, little bit of subtext there. Number 6, Pink Cadillac by Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. Track 7, Little Deuce Coop by the Beach Boys. Track 8, Surf City by Jan and Dean, or Brian Wilson, depending on how you see it. Track 9, King of the Road, by Roger Miller. And track 10, Walk on the Wild Side, by Lou Reed. And, and the nephew looks at his uncle and says, Do you know what that song's about? And the uncle says, Yeah, it's about the wild side of town. And the nephew pauses for a beat and says, Yeah, yeah, that's what it's about. The automatic shifter is smooth and tapered, unlike the C4, which was flared like a horse's erection. Cadillac XLR. For the man who catches a skateboard competition in between ESPN channels, he watches it long enough to see a competitor fall. He tisks, shakes his head, and switches to the golf channel. Cadillacs are bona fide classics, but the modern caddies are more overrated than the Martian. But a healthy respect for Cadillacs is as all natural as Briar's ice cream, or elderly people spooning in the nude. It's as natural as trying Tinder for a week, and then deleting it, because what is Tinder, really? It's supposed to be a hookup app, but it's become a home to spam bots and women with boyfriends looking for a self-esteem boost that their men aren't giving them. This Cadillac has a 4.6-liter North Star V8 that makes 320 horsepower, and it's built on the C5 chassis. This is the only non-Corvette to be built in a Corvette plant. Moreover, only 15,000 Cadillac XLRs were made. So there's a higher insurance on this Cadillac than on the Hellcat. But oh man, the North Star. We have to talk about this. The GM North Star motor. It's a horrible lump of a power plant. It's a disgusting engine that no one asked for and no one needed. It's full of more useless procedures than a crooked dentist. The GM Fist of North Star motor is as bloody as the anime, which shares its name. This aluminum block is prone to head gasket failure. Block 
cracking, head bolts backing themselves out, and it eats its own belt. Why does this motor even exist? Why have a 4.6 liter North Star when the XLR could have had the 5.7 liter LS motor? All right, I, can, I get it. The North Star is more sophisticated. It's overhead cam instead of cam and block, and it's four valves per cylinder instead of the LS, which was two. But it doesn't add up on paper because everything a North Star can do, the LS can do better, more reliably, and cheaper. Maybe GM was trying to come up with a motor that could go after Ford's, you know, 4.6 liter modular. I mean, that was an overhead cam motor as well. But it's like GM were making, were making a motor just to make it complicated. That's it. The only reason the North Star motor exists is to move pamphlets. The people who were interested in cars that had, for some reason, people thought that, oh, cam and block motors, oh, that's, that's oh, I'm, I'm a sophisticated American. I, I like things that aren't old tech. Oh, GM North Star. Finally, they're getting with the times, but the motor doesn't work. It only looks good in a pamphlet. Ooh, a Cadillac, 32 valve engine. Yeah, take that, Europe. And initially in in the days, this was a good motor, but it didn't have the lasting endurance that the LS motor does. Granted, the Cadillac XLR does provide a comfortable drive. It is more comfortable than a Corvette C5. Nothing that's going to blow your mind, but very welcoming. And there's freedom here, like rubbing one out after you move out of your parents' house, get your first apartment, and realize you don't have to worry anymore about someone walking in on you. That kind of freedom. And it has a very elaborate folding roof. That takes a while. You're supposed to look at the Cadillac XLR as the gentleman's Corvette, although it's hard to know who this gentleman is exactly. Like mine and the Romans' mutual attraction to art majors, the XLR defies any attempt to explain the enthusiasm for it. I mean, you can be enthusiastic for this car because you're just not going to see another one of these. And to see one that's running and doesn't have any problems, well, that's even rarer. And this one has no problems. The North Star is working. The block didn't crack. So there you go. If you can afford a 2005 XLR, you could just buy a C5 or a C6 outright. Sure, it has Corvette-esque qualities, but it feels like the only reason it exists is to give you a Corvette without the Corvette name. In a way, it kind of makes sense if you want to be a Corvette guy without any of the popular conceptions. Both wrong and otherwise, of actually being a Corvette guy. Say what you will, but historically the word Cadillac carries more cultural weight than Corvette. Cadillac doesn't conjure up images of aftermarket exhausts that sound like you're emptying a sack of nickels down a rusty drain pipe. Cadillac doesn't call to mind the thought of guys whose their idea of decorating their car is to airbrush their own car onto the engine cover. No one is going to paint flames on the side of an XLR. No one is going to have a Looney Tunes theme going on with the floor mats, or bros who curb stomp watermelons to recreate the elevator scene from Drive. Cadillac was your grandpa. It calls to mind an old man who loved his car because it was the second big purchase he made after the war, and he took care of the car, waxed it every Sunday, and let you have a go in an empty parking lot when you were 12. And when you accidentally backed your Pontiac Sunfire into it when you were 17, you had your first real pain panic attack because you blew it. You were grandpa's favorite, but now you're a lost cause, and how could grandpa ever love you again when you just destroyed his first love? But when his anger faded, he simply clasped you on the back and said, let's get to work. And you spent a weekend underneath the car, unbolting the chrome bumper, searching junkyards for the same year replacement bumper, and sitting zen-like with a random orbital buffer making that replacement bumper shine like new, and winding back the clock. Because Car repair can be frustrating, but for a lot of people, it's the only measure of control they really have over their lives. And so it was, with you and Gramps passing tools back and forth, talking about pussy, and bare-knuckle boxing, and rock and roll. And how this car will be yours someday. Grandpa's gone, but every time you hear the word Cadillac, you're back in that garage, and nothing else in the world matters. That's Cadillac. And this isn't. This is an experiment. An admirable experiment, but it was a failure. Cadillac may produce some sort of concept car like this again and shove it into production for a little while, but it's hard to break out of that big boat 60s mode because that's what we want from Cadillac and we don't want this because in our mind's eye, Cadillac never was this. I get it. 
the XLR is for a much younger crowd. This really isn't for boomers who just view youth as a terminal condition. Then again, it isn't exactly for the newly minted drivers who just got their first big paycheck from working at Dorney Park all summer. No. The Cadillac XLR is for the Gen X professional, someone in his early 40s, someone who's in between deciding what they're going to do with the rest of their lives and coming to the realization that inertia has already decided for them. One time there was a car, it was an XLR, and it went by the name of Cadillac. Displacement 4.6, not made for getting chicks, but did I mention it's a Cadillac? Hey dude, I wonder what a C5 goes for with a brand new LS motor yet. You'll never quite forget this gentleman's Corvette, the car that's known as Cadillac. 